So welcome dear students. Today we will be solving two good questions from the pre score test series. And uh, the first question is this one. A configuration is given in which the strings are sliding on frictionless pulleys and you have to find the speed of point C on the string given in the configuration. So first of all what we will do, we will consider only this part. Okay, Let us see what is happening in this part. In this part, if you see, then this is the pulley P2 and suppose it is tied with a long string something like this okay here this string is fixed now this point a is this suppose what i do i push this point a from here to here while maintaining p2 position at the same location i'm not i'm just holding this pulley and i'm shifting a from here to here let us say i have shifted a by x distance this end i have shifted by x so what will happen to this part of the pulley this part of the string definitely it will become something some loose like this okay how much extra length will have accumulated over here the same length x okay so this this length has accumulated now what i do i will have to pull p2 by some distance so as to compensate for this extra length and make the string tight again. Let us say we have to shift P2 by Y, isn't it? In order to compensate for this length. So Y here and Y here. So how much is extra length is compensated? Y plus Y, 2Y. 2Y is compensated and how much we were supposed to compensate? X. That means what we can say? Y is what? Y is X by 2. So this was just a methodology to make you understand that how much will the P2 move if A is moving by X. If A moves by X, then P2 moves by X by 2. So by similar logic, we can say if A is moving with velocity 4 meter per second, then P2 will be moving with velocity 2 meter per second. Okay. So we got the speed of P2. Now we and this is moving with 2 meter per second. So now we have got this one, we will forget now this part. Now we will focus on the other pulley part. Okay. Let us see what is happening here. This pulley is something like this. And let us say this is the string which is having end at B. This is the end B. And this end, it is going something like this. And it was having, uh, it was ending at pulley P2. Okay. And this is pulley P1. Now you see. Same logic, same method we will be using here. Sub in, in, we, we know that P2 is moving by how much? P2 is moving with velocity 2 meter per second and B is moving with velocity 6 meter per second. So what we do, let us take one second as our reference. In one second, P2 will move how much? Suppose we are holding this pulley here only. We are not allowing it to move. We, are, we have fixed its position. Okay. Then what will happen? Suppose we are moving P2 by 2 meter. Let us say P2 has come over here. Okay. This distance is what? 2 meter. In one second, this is happening. It has moved by 2. And similarly, what we do? We move B by 6 meter because its speed is 6. So B comes somewhere here, let us say. So what is this distance? This is 6. Okay. Now, because of this 2 moving here, as we have fixed P1, we are not allowing to, it to move. That means this string will have become slack. And what extra length have been accumulated in this slackness? 2, isn't it? Because 2 is the value by which P2 has been shifted. So this string is, is slack by 2 meters. And similarly, B has moved from here to here. So this will be very much slacked. Something like this it will become. How much it has become slack? Because of 6, isn't it? So total slackness, slackness is 6 plus 2 is equal to 8, isn't it? Now remember what we did here. In order to compensate for the slack length or the extra length, we needed to move P2 ahead so as to make the string tight again. So here also now we will move P1 again so as to make this extra length compensated and make this all string tight again. Let us say it has moved over here. So why isn't it? In one second it is happening. 
Now same principle. If x was the slackness, we needed to move by x by 2. Here slackness is what? 6 plus 2, 8. That means we will have to move by how much? 4. So in one second, p1 is moving by 4. That means what is the velocity of p2? p1. p1 is moving with 4 meter per second. So this is the logic by which you can find the speed of the center of the pulley. This pulley is moving with velocity speed what? 4 meter per second. Okay. Now you have got this one. Now you have to find the speed of C and C is on the string, not on the pulley. This is a very crucial point. So now we will observe the problem from the frame of reference of P. Suppose you are sitting on P and P is moving with 4 meter per second. So let us say now from observing from frame of reference P1, P1 is moving with speed what? 4 meter per second. And what is this string is what? This string B is moving with speed what? 6 meter per second. That means relative to pulley, how much is the velocity of B? It is 2 meter per second only. And what about the other side? This is P2. Okay. P2 is moving with 4 meter per second. P2, sorry, P2 is moving with 2 meter per second, isn't it? P2 was moving with 2 meter per second and P1 is moving with 4. That means relative to P1, P2 is moving in opposite direction with 2 meter per second. So what is the story if we observe from the point of view of P1? If we observe from P1, it is simply something like this. P1 is here and the string is running over with speed 2 meter per second relative to P1, isn't it? Now, that means relative to P1, if C point is here on the string, this is the string and C is the point on the string, then what is the speed of C? It is nothing but 2 meter per second. So, C goes down by 2 meter per second. Now, simply C is going here by 2 meter per second and P itself is going by 4. So, what is the resultant of C in the frame of reference of this one? You see, P, this P1, P1 is going by 4 this side and C is going with respect to P by 2 this side. So, resultant speed of C is what? Vector addition of the 2, this V. So, V is what? V is nothing but under root 4 square plus 2 square which is under root 20, isn't it? So, this is the speed of point C on the string and this is our answer. So, and similarly, let us see the next question. Next question is says that there is a cone of height h base radius r and it is formed by folding a paper and a small sector is left open as shown. The cone is placed on a horizontal slippery surface with its base circle lying on horizontal surface. In this position, there are no stress in the cone. Now, a vertical force W is applied vertically downward on the apex of the cone. A vertical force is being applied here. We have to find the force needed to be applied tangentially at the two edges so that cone doesn't fall apart. So there is a small gap and the question is you have to find how much force needs to be applied so on this edges so that the cone doesn't fall apart. In fact, if I tell you honestly, this all this setup is meaningless. This force, this gap, all this. I mean, in fact, had it been a normal cone, had it been a normal cone lying on a horizontal surface and a vertical force was being applied, still there would have been some tension in the perimeter in order to make it stable. I will prove it. And this is the tension which you were supposed to fight, find. So we will not go in all this, I mean, this uh, cut and all this. So we will simply take a cone and we will just let just let me explain you by the figure suppose this is the question given okay now we we won't need it uh, i mean the cut the force this is all not needed we will take a simple cone and i will prove that even in a simple cone had it not been a cut there even then there would have been a tension in the perimeter and this is the tension which the question is essentially asking so let us take the complete cone no cut nothing is there okay see 
here if it is lying on the table if the vertical force is applying being applied on it w that means if it has to be stable on the table then on the perimeter of the base circle everywhere some force would, would will be being applied by the ground isn't it upward direction upward direction it is and what should be the total force which is being applied on the perimeter it will be nothing but w isn't it so as to ensure that upward and downward forces are equal so this total force on the perimeter is w only and what is the total length of the perimeter total length is what 2 pi r where r is the radius of the perimeter isn't it so what do you think is the force per unit length on 2 pi r length the vertical force applied by the ground is w so on per unit length force per unit length is what w upon 2 pi r okay remember it it will be used at a later stage now let us take a very small element on the cone this is the cone lying on the horizontal plane and let it let us take a small angle d theta subtended at the center so what is the length of this element this element will be what its length is r d theta isn't it and what do we think the normal force by the ground will be on it let us call this normal force be df df will be what force per unit length times the element length that is r d theta isn't it so let us write df will be what df will be w upon 2 pi r times r d theta okay this is the df now we forget everything and let us say this point is o and this element is at point p you forget now complete cone just focus on what is happening in this length in this rod of length op let us say op the rod okay so let us draw op in a rod form this is something and the rod is lying like this this is the half angle of the cone alpha which is same as here alpha okay now what do we think here we have already seen that what the force being applied by the ground is what it is df okay now if the force from the bottom is df that means the force on the top also should have been df okay now you see one thing although total force on the top is w i mean although here total force on the top is w but if you take the component of this small component on this only on this only it will be df only okay and if you add up all the elements this one this one this one this one then it will be sum up summing up to w so this is the scenario with our rod now do you think it will be stable in this position no you must have studied the inclined i mean there is a inclined rod problem when there is a wall here base here the wall the end tends to slide like this so that means there must be some force on the lower edge which is acting inside so as to not let this edge slide also you can think like that that about this point torque should be balanced here df and df are constituting a couple so in order to oppose it or cancel it there should be an inward force on the base and this force should be dn who will give this force this force will be given by the tension which has been developed along the perimeter okay how how can the tension give the normal force let us see suppose this is the base of the perimeter okay and let us take a very small element something like this so this we call the point p and this we take what r d theta this total angle is theta and the dashed line is the angle bisector of the angle between them so at the upper point at here what is happening the tension is let us say t so this tension will have two components and similarly at the lower point tension is again t 
okay this tension is along the circumference along the circumference okay something like this now this tension will have two components one perpendicular to radius and you see this angle is what this angle is d theta by 2 d theta by 2 and similarly this angle is d theta by 2 so if you see properly then this line is perpendicular to the tension and this component is perpendicular to the dashed line that means here also angle is what d theta by 2 and similarly uh, this uh, tension will have a radially inward component okay so if you see what is the component of t along the uh, along the uh, perpendicular to the dashed line it will be sorry let me first draw the figure okay so this is the scenario t is acting here t is acting here and both of t is have two components the upper one is having what this one is having component t cos d theta by 2 in this direction and t sin d theta by 2 readily inward see readily inward component has come what we were needing this dn isn't it so similarly this t will have two component one t cos d theta by 2 and other readily in com inward component what t sin d theta by 2 now you see these two components this one and this one they are perpendicular to this dashed radius so they will cancel out okay and the resultant is what resultant is inside force t sin d theta by 2 so resultant force is sum of this one this one plus this one so resultant inward force is what 2t sin d theta by 2 okay this is a very important result that means you see the tension is along the circumference but it is giving rise to a radially inward force which is 2t sin d theta, d theta by 2 now if d theta is very small we can write it what sin d theta by 2 will become d theta by 2 and 2t here so it will become t d theta t d theta is the resultant inward force that is dn which we were needing so dn is what dn is nothing but t d theta okay now what you do you see you need to balance the torque about this apex point let us say p so if you balance the torque about this what you can write c dn times l cos alpha l is the length l is the rod length this one this is l so dn times l cos alpha is df times l sin alpha isn't it l sin alpha now you see l and l cancel and df what we have got you see df is already here we have find out df is what 2 pi r r cancel w upon 2 pi d theta so you put dn dn is td td theta put over here dn is what td theta l and l cancel out so cos alpha is equal to df is what w upon 2 pi d theta simply df is w upon 2 pi d theta l has got cancel out so sin alpha remains isn't it now d theta and d theta will cancel out so what will happen simply you get by cancelling d theta here you get t tension we have to find so tension is what tension is w upon 2 pi times what tan alpha isn't it tan alpha alpha is the half angle of this one so tan alpha is what you see here this is the cone in the cone what this height is h and this is r tan alpha is r upon h so finally we got what tension is nothing but w upon 2 pi r upon h this is the answer okay so i hope you understood the concepts and uh, if you have any doubts any queries any questions then please raise in the comments i will try to explain it further thank you